Hi, my name is Bastian fox and today I'll be reading to you from my debut memoir, How to Be Between. Uh, this is a story of my adolescence and early adulthood, and it's about my experiences as a female assigned person who uh, has the ability to grow facial hair and the decision to embrace that facial hair. Um, it's also about uh, how I came to find my voice as a writer, as an activist, and as a singer. Um, and it's just about my experiences being in the world as somebody whose existence has often challenged binary gender norms. So I'm just going to start out and start. Pick to me at 26. It's 2014 and my hair is short and fawn colored. I'm growing it out from when I shaved it. I wear glasses. I have a light beard and mustache. I wear my clothes loose over a small frame. I'm more boyish than I've ever been, although I don't care about that as much these days. I've grown tired of thinking about how to put together an outfit that will pass, how to speak low, how to walk manly, how to accentuate the hairs that have grown unaided across my lower face for half my life. I refer to the small bumps beneath my t-shirt as my chest. If you peered inside me with an ultrasonic frequency, you'd see that my ovaries are adorned with dark circles, like a string of black pearls, but this doesn't bother me. My period comes once a month now, like it never used to, and I don't mind. I'm beginning to see how it's possible for many things to be true at once. I live with the kind of body that ovulates, with breasts and the rest, and facial hair that some say shouldn't be there, and a slippery kind of gender identity that I haven't quite pinned down yet. I've been living in Sydney for almost four years. Over time, it seems that the closer I look at my body and my gender, the blurrier the edges become. At first, I was one thing, a girl thing. Then, at 22, I announced to the world that I was, in fact, a boy thing. Lately, though, I have not been so sure. Right now, I have other things on my mind. I'm in the garage underneath my family home on the south coast of New South Wales, confronting an old filing cabinet, its four deep-bellied drawers filled with paper. I have the bad habit of not letting things go. The filing cabinet is almost as tall as I am. Its beige metal surface is covered in magnets and stickers of indie record labels, vegan slogans, a zine shop, a Greenpeace logo. I'm standing on the dusty concrete floor with the garage door open. Outside, the clear tone of bellbirds echoes through the eucalyptus trees that grow from the back of the house to the top of the escarpment. On the morning breeze is a smell of salt water and seaweed. I know I'd rather be walking Jonah, my family's Labrador, down the gravel path beside the train line, under the Morton Bay fig trees in the Glastonbury Gardens, and across the road to the dog beach, but mum has asked me to sort through my stuff. I'm in the belly of the whale, and I'm scared. The past is a dangerous place. Every few years I get an itch. When my skin begins to feel tight, and my life begins to feel small, I shed. Objects, cities, friends, identities. There are pieces of me scattered all over, many of which I have not come back for. For the past two years, I've been living in a terrace house in Petersham, but in a few months' time, I'll be moving overseas. My bedroom will empty out, clothes taken to charity bins, books given to friends, posters on the wall taken down and pasted into scrapbooks. I seem to find pleasure in abandoning the most recent past, the life I've built for myself, the person I've become. The problem is I'm sentimental. I've never been willing to scorch the earth behind me when I leave. There are some things I put in boxes. I save these things for later, whenever that is. Unburdening myself makes it easier to run. When I was a child, my uncle watched me playing in the park and said, she's a runner. I remember on the cusp of puberty competing in the 100 meter sprint at the school sports carnival. I was a soccer playing tomboy. I had strong legs. I ran hard, feet pounding the buffalo grass. I wanted to win. In the last few seconds, I sensed an incredible source of energy inside me, an electrical tingle, a surge of power that would catapult me forwards at light speed. But for some reason, I couldn't tap into it. 
I always fell short at the finish line. By high school, I'd given up on the whole idea of physical activity. My body was becoming an unwelcome place. As the strength of the childhood prophecy wore off, a new one came to take its place. A darker prophecy, one that would mark me as different, other. The prophet, my hormones. Speaking through me, they began to reveal my destiny, the ways in which I would complicate ideas about gender just by existing. How I would come to present with apparent femaleness as one who should be a woman, and yet with a beard that would forbid people to read me as such. And so the hair began to grow. The hair was like a question mark upon my face. Everywhere I went, people demanded to know, what are you? I said I was a girl thing, but in truth, I've never been this. Not completely, not easily, not freely. My passage through the world as girl, then woman, has been blocked, questioned, challenged. People have asked for my passport, for proof. They have reached out a hand to pull on my beard to see if it is real. Unlike my 19th century counterparts, Madame Clifulia, Annie Jones, Julia Pastrana, I am no bearded lady. I have no genteel manners. I will not perform. I will not permit transgressions. I do not exist to satisfy public curiosity, an abject object on display. I'm not here to embody the abnormal so others can gaze upon me and feel that they themselves are happily normal. You may have questions about my beard. Why, how, when? You may want to see a picture, confirm that it exists. Sometimes it is not visible. Sometimes I play the circus magician and I make the hair disappear. It is not really gone though. The disappearance is a temporary illusion and the hair returns to centre stage in time. I assure you, my beard is real and it has a story, but this is the least interesting thing about me. Yet it is a thing I must explain. Not just to others, but to myself. And so I go in search of an answer to that question, the one that everyone should ask themselves, but few do. What are you? We shall see, you and I. We will investigate together like a pair of detectives, and we will try at least to piece together a reasonable account of how I searched. We will look for answers in the paper trail, these records of my younger self, I hope that you will accept this assemblage, this collation of documents, in lieu of a definitive answer, if one cannot be found. It begins here, with me climbing inside the towering filing cabinet. Thanks so much. How to be between. <laughs>